Camera, please, Maki, we're rolling. Cameras are rolling. Maki. The key was to make this a George Romero zombie movie. He created the genre. He's the icon. He's the Hall of Famer, and he's the he's the standard. The first time, it just looked like you grabbed and you just went ah. What it needs to be is ah. And then he clobbers him. George is a great storyteller. He's a great craftsman. He's a sensational stylist, um, and of course. If you're going to make a zombie movie, he's the guy you want to have make it. There's something self-reflective in what George has to say and what he says about society in his zombie movies. So there's the gore, there's the fun, there's some jokes. Be a sport. Give us a bite. <laughs> there's some scares. But if you want it, it's, you know, it's reflective about society today. And, and I think he elevates the genre in that way. Yeah, that's yes, what I'm saying, but it's more than a it's more than oh, yeah. just a close-up. Oh, okay. He fires his gun. So we can only do after we do this. George wears his legendary status very lightly. You know what I'm saying? He, he, there's no sense from George at all that he's a, the living legend that he is. Yes. What? How is this great? Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. I'm used to making these movies just you know, trying to convince friends to come and be in this thing. And all of a sudden, Dennis Hopper and John Leguizamo and Ozzy and John Simon want to do it. You know, I'm going, you're crazy, but come ahead. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you guys both. Great. Thank you, George. Great stuff. Thematically is what this film is about, a bunch of people trying to live as though nothing has changed. Or at least, you know, that's what the administration believes. The protagonists understand that the world has completely changed. <laughs> There is an administration, sort of a self-styled government. There's the, the, the big man, Kaufman, Dennis Hopper's character. Dead Reckoning has been stolen by your second in command. I want him captured or killed, and I want my $2 million piece of equipment to return. I've always admired George Romero. You know, his film came out around the same time as Easy Rider came out. I, mean, uh, I think a little bit before, maybe. But uh, it's a thrill working with him, too. It's fun. Guys, we getting close? Oh, yeah. We're there. there. God, I should never do that. I hope I don't get too from It's apple juice. Oh, okay. <laughs> I met Dennis one day. We wound up chatting mostly about the 60s. We're both guys that who I think were disappointed that the 60s didn't work out the way we expected they would. So we, you know, we wound up just in that meeting. We never, we hardly ever talked about the script except Dennis said, you know, I don't want to go over the top with this guy. And he, it was, he said Rumsfeld, you know, he said, I'll play him like Rumsfeld. And I said, that's exactly where I'm going with this is the Bush administration. Fucking spit bastard. Zombies, man, creep me out. <laughs> I started watching his movies when I was about eight years old because uh, we had tapes at home. So I would sneak, you know, sneak the Betamax and have uh, Dawn of the Dead. And um, so I grew up with his movies. Ozzy I've known since she was knee high because her dad basically caused my Dawn of the Dead to, to happen. Dario brought me to Rome, and I, I wrote the first draft of the script for Dawn of the Dead in Rome, in a little apartment where Dario put me. And, I, and then he came to Pittsburgh. That, um, we collaborated on a film called Two Evil Eyes, and he brought Ozio with him when she was, you know, toddling about. So I've known her for a long time, so she feels like family. She's great, she's wonderful. <laughs> I grew up in horror film sets and there's a certain smell to fake blood and to this kind of makeup and the glue that they used it. For me, it reminds me of my childhood 
and I feel secure. I feel secure around zombies. <laughs> The Living Dead was a masterpiece, and then I feel like he's reached another level, another climax in this one. He's at the top, and, and working with him, he's such a gentle man. You know, he's in his mid-60s, and he gives more than any of the young guys. Is kicking ass, and all night shoots, all exteriors, smoking, chain smoking like a fiend, just on coffee. You know, he looks like an old basketball player and with the big giant glasses that see everything. He says he's deaf out of one ear. I don't know if that's a trick or what, just to be able to listen in on everybody, because he always hears everything and catches you. You son of a bitch, you fucked me over, didn't you? So you better fucking let me in and give me a nice place. I'll crush the life out of you. Maybe we should talk about this when you're a little less excited. Cut! Great. Safety on the He's the big daddy of the genre, right? He created it. So it's awesome. He's a great guy, too. He's really a great guy. Easy going guy. Knows what he wants. Great director. It's a pleasure and an honor, George, to work with you. To bring Big Daddy to life. Oh! I want to start with the Stay with it. Okay. As soon as you said to George Romero, zombie movie, it really opens up the parameters and the constraints and restrictions on, on the type of film it can be. It can be politically incorrect. It can have a bit of a go at this. It can push things a little bit too far in that way. It can be, it can be violent. <laughs> There's some moments when you go, <laughs> You just wouldn't get away with that in any other movie than a George Romero zombie movie. I mean, seriously, you, you would not get away with it. But for me, to be on the set in those moments is kind of like... I feel like a kid. <laughs> this is good, you know? This is good fun. Once again, Simon, stand by. Three, three, take three. All right, well, Simon. Look, I'm telling you straight out, and, I, and you know, and this isn't just bullshit for the DVD. I've had so much fun on this movie. <laughs> Favorite part has been uh, on a freezing night in the water. That was wonderful. It was awesome. Yeah, in the freezing water, coming out, hunting down the bad guys. We're laughing now. We won't be laughing later. I also have a big So at this point, it's just going there, you know? It's just straight ahead, getting there, getting there. <laughs> I've worked on a few zombie movies, so I'm kind of a trained zombie. I'm here doing uh, dive safety. So when there's uh, performers in the water, a crew in the water, we just stand uh, in the water with them and make sure everything's OK. I find it warmer in the water than out here. Yeah, we've got dry suits on, but uh, we feel a little sorry for the people who don't, because the water gets cold. Let's go. You got short hair? You can go right in. On the far side, come in as well. Put a little bit more distance if you're in the next person. OK, everybody just hold it there for a moment, please. And we're going to have a look through the camera. The camera needs to go in. You know, George is a master editor, and I think that's what makes his films so great to watch. Because there's so much detail, detail, detail. He shoots so much coverage. Hey, Mark. Bravo, Mark. Charlie, Mark. Back right on, kid. I went to your garage, there's nothing there. Your guys aren't there, and my car isn't there. Immediately when I wrote this character of Charlie, I said, All right, Robert Joy is the guy. And there was some resistance, because they said, well, he doesn't look like a burly. He doesn't look like a fighter, you know? And I said, but this guy doesn't need to be that. He's, he's like a savant. He has a particular skill. He's an amazing marksman. He's very appreciative of everything an actor brings to it. And uh, his ideas are often like, ooh, 
this would be cool. Why don't you try this little look or that little look? And his ideas are like jewels because there's something that you wouldn't have come up with ever. And as soon as you hear it, you think that's absolutely right. Okay. That's great. That's great. Let me try that. Oh, it is? Josh. Ah. He revels like in a, a childlike way in the Halloween aspects of it. He's got to get all that right. But you see his intellect and his vision clicking, you know? You, you see it all the time. He's always trying to hold on to how this story is best told to get his vision across. You can't tell the zombies how to move. I mean, yeah, you got, there you are, you got 50 zombies staring at you, and you want, and if, if I say, okay, so you're dead, so you, you want to walk like, in a, that's as far as it goes. If I do that, 50 people will do that. So what I always say is, you know, use your own imagination. You know, you're stiff. <laughs> Every single person was there because they wanted the movie to be good. They were there for George. Nobody was there out of personal gratification or to, you know, out of ego. Everybody was there because they want George to have a great movie. We need to continue the zombies spinning, spinning, spinning into place. Spinning into place. Spinning and that's place. really what most of my motivation on this film was, is that because I just wanted to do a film with George and, and, and contribute to a successful movie for him. I'm just having a good time. I'm just the guy having a good time. I, mean, I never, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not a Hollywood guy. I don't crave any of that shit, man. I don't crave that sort of notoriety or anything. I mean, God, if I could stay under the radar, you know. I'm a, I, I'd like to play at the $2 betting window, you know. I don't want to play for that $100 million hit. Thank you. Thanks.